So in this video, we're going to talk about how to describe transformations of rational functions. So this is a rational parent function. It's given by the equation f of x equals 1 over x. And so let's go ahead and describe its key characteristics. You can see that it has a vertical asymptote here, which is given by the equation x equals 0. So the domain will include all real numbers from negative infinity to 0 and from 0 to infinity. It has a horizontal asymptote right here, which has the equation y equals 0. So that means the range will be all real numbers from negative infinity to 0 and from 0 to infinity. So since this is the parent function, all other rational functions are considered to be transformations of this original function. The transform functions will all have the form f of x equals a over x minus h plus k, where a, h, and k are constant. So let's look at an example. So the function f of x equals 1 over x is transformed to g of x equals 1 over x plus 4 minus 2. Let's describe the transformations. So when we describe the transformations, we want to think about the values of a, h, and k. So I'm just going to go ahead and remind you of standard form so we can determine the values of a, h, and k. So you can see that a is 1, h is going to be negative 4, because you can see to get a plus 4 in the denominator, I have to do x minus negative 4, right? So that's how I get the x plus 4 in the denominator. So h is going to be negative 4, and then my k is going to be negative 2. So a is 1 means there's no change, okay? So a has to be bigger than or less than 1 or less than 0 in order for us to get a, some kind of change from that. H is negative 4, so you can see that I have a shift left because that's why it looks like a plus sign in my problem. So this means it's going to be shift left 4 units. And then finally we have K, which is negative 2. So K is negative 2 means K is less than 0, so we have a shift down 2 units. Remember that you can graph both functions to determine the transformations. If we look at the graph, you can see that the graph in purple is in fact shifted left four units and down two units. Now let's look at this example. We have g of x equals negative three over x minus two plus one. Let's describe the transformations. So once again, the values of a are negative th three, h is two, and k is one. So the negative three is actually gonna have two effects on our graph. You can see that we have a reflection when a is less than zero, so that is going to create a reflection in our graph. And also, because three is a number that is bigger than one, we're going to have a vertical stretch. Now, if we think about the effects of having h equals two, um, so h equals two means that we have a minus sign in our problem, so that is going to be a shift right to and now finally, we have the value of k, which is equal to 1. Um, since k is bigger than 0, that is going to be a shift up 1 unit. So we're going to have a graph that's reflected, vertically stretched, shifted right 2, and up 1. Let's once again graph these functions to verify that is true. But you can see the graph in purple is vertically stretched. It's reflected, shifted to the left 2, and up 1. So now let's try this example. We have g of x equals 4 over x minus 3. So in this case, a equals 4, h equals 3, and k is not there, right? We don't have a plus something after our fraction. So we're going to say that k equals 0. So let's describe the transformation. So a is 4. a is bigger than 1, so we're going to say that is a vertical stretch h equals 3, right? So h equals 3 gives us a minus sign in our problem, so that is why we have a shift right. And then k equals 0, and that is going to be no change, right? k has to be bigger than 0 or less than 0 for us to have a change. So let's graph this and make sure that our graph is in fact vertically stretched and shifted right. And you can see that this is in fact true, right? The graph in purple is shifted to the right, and it is also vertically stretched. So now go ahead and pause the video and try this example on your own. So you can see that here the value of a is negative 1, so that is going to create a reflection. Um, h is 0, so we're going to have no shift left or right. And then k is negative 3, so we're going to have a shift down. 
When we graph both functions, you can see that we do have a shift down and we also have a reflection. So go ahead and pause the video now and try this next example on your own. You can say that a equals one, so we have no change. Um, and then we have h equals negative three, so that is gonna create a shift to the left, right? That's why we have a plus sign in our problem. And k equals five, so that is why we have a graph that is shifted up. So we wanna make sure that our graph is shifted left and up, which we can do by graphing. Um, and you can see that the graph in purple is shifted left and it is shifted also up. So in summary, remember that you can study the values of a, h, and k in a rational function, f of x equals a over x minus h plus k, to determine the transformations. a will create a stretch, compression, or reflection. h will cause a shift left or right, and the value of k will cause a shift up or down.